Today's wrap is sponsored by Bud Light, JCTickets.net, Geico Insurance, Dunaway Furniture, Ocean City Golf Club, RussellStreetReport.com, Comfort and Gold Coast, Holiday Inn Express, Toyota.com, your official site for Toyota deals. The original Green Turtle, hosted by the Blue Ox Bar and Grill. Welcome back. It is the original Green Turtles Ravens Rap Show right here on Comcast Beach TV, Channel 47, WMDT TV, and 93.5 The Beach, the strongest signal Ravens affiliate on Delmarva. And don't forget our radio show. It'll air Sundays at 11 o'clock. Now on WMDT, we're going to be on right before the Saturday night game of the week and on Sundays at noon. So you can catch us uh, all over the place. Of course, Comcast Speech TV as well. So uh, if you're unable to come out, you're going to find us somewhere on the TV or the radio. Make sure to tune in. We want to see you here at the Blue Ox, at the Ravens Room. We've got Ravens ticket giveaways, hotel giveaways, Bud Light prize packages, all sorts of good stuff. And uh, you got to check out this Ravens Room. Mike Bradley, Spencer Tillis, Tony Lombardi, and uh, Bobby Vermillion, all a part of the panel. And of course, we're wearing our pink ribbons. October is uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, good cause to uh, certainly contribute to if you're able to do so. And I believe some events here in Ocean City you can check out online uh, to be a part of. Um, also, you know what we haven't done this year that I usually did in years past to do our quick high school football update among our local teams, unfortunately. Steven Decatur off to an 0 4 start this year. First, probably second time in Bob Knox's history. But we wish to see Hawks well. They've had a brutal start to the schedule. I think they'll turn things around the second half. It's a rebuilding year, but they're going to get better. Also, Indian River, they did uh, win last weekend against Milford. They're two and two on the season. They're a rebuilding boat as well, but we wish the Seahawks and uh, Indians well. Those are our adopted teams of the season. Before we get back to the Ravens, just a quick AFC North recap. Uh, a couple of teams on by last week. The Bengals and the Browns were on a by. The Steelers played the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They lost 27 24. The first time that the Steelers have lost to Tampa Bay at home, and that certainly made the Ravens feel good. Puts the Ravens up a game on the uh, on the Steelers. Now, coming up this week, you've got Cleveland at Tennessee, Pittsburgh at Jacksonville, and the Sunday night game, Cincinnati at New England. And, you know, it's a week-to-week -week schedule. I, I hate to pick the games, per se. You'd think that uh, you know, the Steelers might bounce back at Jacksonville, but it's not the same defense. Cleveland's coming off a bye. you got to think they got a pretty good chance at Tennessee, but again, it's on the road. And Cincy and New England, who knows with New England, maybe if they can fix things, you know, who knows. That defense all of a sudden gave up a ton of rushing yards. But Cincinnati 3-0, uh, and the Ravens are 3-1, and Pittsburgh 2-2, two and two, Cleveland at 1-2. And, and again, the Ravens have played the most division games, and they're 2-1 and one, uh, in, the, uh, in the league, or in the division, I should say. Let's get back to, we were talking about defense, guys. We were talking about secondary and the health and getting a guy like Matt Elam in the right position. Darren Stewart has not also, has also not done, I should say, a very good job in secondary coverage. The back seven needs a lot of help. Jimmy Smith's been great. We know that. Let's talk about some positives, though, with the front seven. And I think this run defense has done an, a lot better job than it has the last couple of years. A healthy Tony, a healthy Haloti Nada, but Brandon Williams, the nose tackle, has done a phenomenal job. I think you got a future pro bowler there if he continues the kind of job he's been doing. You know, he's got some great athleticism for a guy his size, and he's collapsing the pocket, which really helps Doomerville and Suggs off the edges, and also Courtney Upshaw. You've got Pernell McPhee coming in there, and he when he gets inside the tackles and, and he's rushing the quarterback from the inside, he's been very effective. And Haloti Nato, like you said, healthy Haloti Nato with Brandon Williams, they're eating up tacklers or eating up blockers, and that just makes C.J. Mosley that much better, so yeah. good stuff. And, and McPhee, Bobby, McPhee is a very multiple guy. He's able to play linebacker for him. He is able to play defensive line, and with the injuries we've had there, he's, he's become a very invaluable member of this team. He really has, and uh, the nice thing about him, like you mentioned, he's versatile. He can play anywhere, and he's very athletic, so uh, he's been a big piece of, of this defense. And, and I will say this, too. You mentioned Brandon Williams and Haloti Nada uh, playing r extremely well. And they're pushing the pocket back. And we know when that happens, Tony, that your edge rushers get better angle, a better angle to the quarterback. So that's why you can see Duberville and Suggs trying to be kind of being a little bit more effective. It's hard for the quarterback to step up if the pocket's being pushed back. So it's just a good combination right now. I think we've got some good athletes. You know, we've, we've been a little injured on the defensive line. Uh, the rookie from uh, Florida State uh, has been injured. He didn't play. Timmy Jernigan. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's been. Uh, 
out the last two weeks, I think it'll get even better when he comes back. Yep, no question about it. And Spencer, you know, we, we mentioned the Steelers lost to Tampa Bay. That's a defense that doesn't uh, doesn't look like the defenses of old. The Ravens still going through a transition, but at least the front seven looks to be very solid here the first couple of weeks. The back seven, different story. But it's interesting to see two teams known for their defense in transition that at times look good and at other times look pretty bad. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you look at the Steelers, too. I mean, they banked on that defense in that game. They punted away. And they go right down, score a touchdown to lose the game right there. And you look at the Ravens, too. I agree, but you look at the D-line, it's playing so much better, and it's making those second-tier guys just the stats are going on. We are sitting here talking about Mosley a second ago and the fact that he had such a good bounce-back game. And it wasn't just him playing that much better. The D-line was creating angles for him. It was really giving him opportunities to be a lot more successful. And so when the D-line is winning early, it makes the rest of the defense so much. It takes so much pressure off the rest of them. The 11, uh, 11 tackles, 7 solo in the game for C.J. Mosley. Not bad. Daryl Smith with a good game as well. He had 8. And guys, we talked about last week. I know, Bobby, you were on with us last week, how they just did not have a good game against the Browns. But Spencer, you matched a great bounce back game. Yeah, we needed, we definitely needed that to happen. I mean, you looked at a, ro a rookie, and, and I know you read an article about how the coaching staff is a little afraid to play some of the rookies, but C.J. Mosley is certainly an exception to that rule, Tony. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, when you invest the 12th pick in the draft, you better play the guy, right? <laughs> and we haven't had that often, uh, that high of a pick. So, well, well, let's talk about your article about the relux reluctance to play younger guys that the Ravens draft, Mosley being the exception. Arthur Brown, a second-year guy, a healthy guy. Uh, this is, what, four games now that he has not played in. Talk to us a little bit about your article. Well, I looked at, it's a frustrating thing for me because Arthur Brown's a guy that they had a first-round grade on in the 2013 draft. And all, every time I ask anybody within the organization about Arthur Brown, they'll say, think Navarro Bowman. Well, if I think Navarro Bowman, I'm not thinking inactive list for four straight weeks. No. <laughs> so so that's, it's a frustrating thing for me because when, when you look around, and I hear that, Okay, well, maybe he's not as good a special teams player as some of the other guys like Zachary Orr, an undrafted free agent, like Albert McClellan, undrafted free agent, Brandon Trawick, uh, who, the Anthony Levine. All these guys are undrafted free agents that apparently have better special teams capabilities than uh, Arthur Brown. However, I went back and looked. Of all the special teams plays, there have been 63 special teams plays where there was blocking and tackling. I'm taking out the point after touchdown. I'm taking out uh, field goals, okay? 63 plays. Of those 63, only 16 were competed. In other words, there were touchbacks or fair catches. 16 plays. So over four games, that's four competed plays per game. I'm sorry, but four undrafted free agents do not put my second-round pick from 2013 on the bench. He's got to play at least to spell Daryl Brown. I mean Daryl Smith every now and then. Yeah, I mean last year, Bobby, the Can word you tell was. Tell a little passion about yeah, Arthur Brown. Yeah, no, I'm, I, no, I hear you. I mean they, they, those high draft picks, and you traded up for Arthur Brown right. too. There's no question about it. And, and you mentioned about uh, the special teams. Maybe that's being overblown a little bit. We heard that Arthur Brown had not really learned the playbook well enough to be comfortable to put him out there last year. Okay, he's had a full season. The word was that he was a lot more comfortable, but we're still not seeing it. So there's got to be something there. But at the end of the day, you got to pull the trigger. You have to pull the trigger eventually. But you know what? You got to give the, the coaching staff a little bit more credit. Like you said, Tony, it is frustrating from a fan's perspective and watching and saying, why is it this second round pick who they were so high on playing? Why, don't, why isn't he at least active? But at the same time, they watch practice every day. There's a reason whether it's, you know, whether it's his mind or whether physically maybe he's not big enough. That was one of the knocks on him when he first got to the Ravens. They, they needed to get some size on the guy. He's, he's got some speed. He's got some quickness, but he's not that big of a man. So maybe they're trying to build him up the next couple of years. You would think, though, if he was active and something happened to Mosley or to Daryl Smith, he would be the guy they would go to in the middle of the field. He'd be the guy they'd go to and he'd have no experience. You know, I look at last year. Out of 16 games, he was active 14 times. He can't even match that this year in his second year. See, and I would have thought, and, and you could play it by a matchup, by matchup per week. Spencer, I, I took a look at the teams we played. Okay, Pittsburgh and Cleveland, you may say, not, not necessarily you know, a huge passing team. We'll, we'll keep them out. But against Cincinnati week one, that's a team that had a lot of weapons. And why wouldn't you put him in there? His strength's supposed to be dropping the pass coverage as a linebacker. And then, uh, you know, this past week uh, in the win against Carolina, if you take a look at the stats, it's been a team that's relied a lot more on the pass uh, than, the, uh, than the run. Yeah, absolutely. And you wouldn't really expect him to get too many opportunities this weekend, too, because Indianapolis isn't really a team that's known for running right now either. And so you're missing out on all those early opportunities to get him some reps. And so it's, it's tough. If the guys behind, or that are playing ahead of him are producing, 
your and hands kind of play. Spencer, I think that's the answer. I think if you look at it, he's not going to play in Daryl Smith's spot, and he's certainly not going to play for Mosley right now. Both are playing well, and, and, and Smith's more of the run stopper than Mosley. Mosley's good at both coverage and run stopping. I think, you know, I think the fact of the matter is he's got two guys in front of him that are just more talented, and that's keeping them out. It's not about starting, though. It's about, though, getting into the game if one of those two went down. I think they and, want and him And he has field, to be man. there. He's got, think, he's got to be that guy. But, yeah, so, so it is. Uh, guys, let's talk about a couple of other players quickly. Um, Torrey Smith finally got into, you know, got a touchdown, got a little action in the game, but he's a guy that's disappeared. Tony, from what your guys have broken down, from what you've seen, are guys are defenses taking him away? Are the, the Ravens just not featuring him? I mean, clearly the Ravens are featuring Steve Smith, though, quite a bit. I think it's a, an issue with him and Joe Flacco. Not that they have a person, personality issue. It's that they're both getting used to a new offense, and Joe's getting used to it a lot faster than Torrey is. I don't think Torrey's in the right spot sometimes. If you recall that Cleveland game, there was a, a post corner that Joe Flacco threw the ball about 15 yards further down the field when yeah. Torrey cut it off. Right. Uh, that's, I got to bet on Joe on that play. I think Joe knows where to go with that football, and Torrey doesn't know where to be. So if you watch him, and I watched him away from the ball a few times this week, he's just not getting open, and he's not, he's not, a, he's not a refined route runner. In his fourth season, you would hope that he would be a little bit better than he is. He's a, he's a one-trick pony, really. He's pretty good at what he does when they need that, but... He's a one-trick pony. But yet, last year we saw him on uh, on drag patterns across the field, which West Coast offense could put in there. We saw him on some slam plays, and he was effective the first six games of the year. So while he may not be the best route runner, Tony, we've seen him do a little bit more than just be a nine-route guy. So I'm, I'm still a little bit surprised at it. I'm surprised they're not doing more drags, too, and particularly when they're running the ball better and they're getting those linebackers to pull up and opening up that spot you know, behind the linebackers and in front of the safeties. So it remains to be seen. But right now I, I'm a little disappointed with Torrey because this is a, it's a contract year for him, so he's got to step up his game. And Spencer, quickly, Jacoby Jones, 30 seconds. He's reverting back to his days in Houston now this year. And is Gary Kubiak is just uh, his kryptonite? I don't, yeah, that's a great question. I don't know. It's, it seems like Steve Smith is maybe being the focal point right now, and you know, Flacco is maybe trying to figure out how to balance him in with some of the other pieces, and it just hasn't really gotten to that full point yet where everyone's getting the ball sped around. I, you need to figure out a way to figure that out down the stretch, though. All right, coming up, more of the Ravens Rap Show as we preview the upcoming game against Indianapolis. Keep it here. Comcast Beach TV, WMDT, and 93.5 The Beach. In April 1959, Art Wall won the Masters, edging out Carrie Middlecoff and Arnold Palmer by finishing birdie, 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 par birdie. One month later, Ocean City Golf Club celebrated the opening of their first 18 holes. That course has been transformed now into one of the most scenic golf layouts on the East Coast. Come experience 36 of the most beautiful and challenging holes you'll find anywhere. Ocean City Golf Club in Ocean City, Maryland. Welcome to the Comfort in Gold Coast. Conveniently located just one block from the beach and adjacent to shopping at the Gold Coast Mall and the movie theater. Newly renovated and open year round with a marvelous bayfront view. Visit us on the web at comfortgoldcoast.com and see our hot deals and great golf packages or simply call our direct reservation line to plan your stay. <laughs> 